Okay. Um, hi, Aubrey. Today I'm going to show everybody how I do my corn meal Johnny cake that we did on Trek. I've got everything I need on my table here. I've got a mixing bowl, an extra bowl, and the recipe's here. I think I have a picture of it. I need cornmeal. I got one and a half cups of cornmeal. I need milk, which I'm going to get, and two cups of flour here, and I need baking powder, which I have here, baking soda, I don't need, but I bought two teaspoons of salt, which I have here. Uh, we need some white sugar, that's two thirds cup that I already measured. I'll need some oil and two eggs, one, two. I've got my Dutch oven, my ch chimney fire starter. I've got briquettes, briquette starter, something to start it on fire with. And I like to use my uh, Bunt oven, just a regular bunt oven. And inside it, I put a tin foil. And so then we keep it up high, and it will be baking in a little while. I'll show you how that works. So, first, we're going to mix up all the ingredients. The recipe says start with cornmeal and milk. We'll stop now while I get. Cornmeal, the recipe says to let it soak for a few minutes first. So we'll put the cornmeal into the milk to soak. Mix that up a little bit. Dee -dee 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 -dee. I've made a note that I can use germade if I want. I tried it once without it, it tasted pretty good. Put cornmeal here and milk. In my other bowl, I'm going to mix together flour and everything else. So I'm going to take my flour. Powder, my salt, my sugar. I'll add some oil and two eggs and have everything in this other bowl for now. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll be right back with you. While the uh, corn is soaking, I think I gotta get this, these coals started because it's gonna want to cook pretty quick. So, what I do, we start the coals. This recipe calls for coals on the top and the bottom. So I think they are, uh, let's see, uh, 19 coals on the bottom and pan on the top, so that's about 30 coals I'm going to need to cook up here. So, we'll count out 30 coals here. This gets your hands kind of dirty black. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. 7, Okay, so the trick with the Dutch ovens, you have to have the coals fairly well started. So we're going to put a little bit of this uh, fire starter on here. Mm. See if that blows up on me. Give it a little shake here. Okay, we'll let those get started and get nice and toasty. And after they're ready, then we'll put some on the bottom, some on the top. And meanwhile, I'm going to mix up the flour and the other good things while that's burning over here. So, I need me a... Mm -hmm. Luckily, I'm right near the kitchen so I can wash my hands. Am I on video? Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, 
We got two eggs. We'll start with a flower. That's uh, two cups of flour. Then we have uh, salt, baking powder. So we'll start with four teaspoons, not tablespoons, of flour. That's tablespoons, this is teaspoons. So we do four of these. One, two, three, four, just to be exact. Two teaspoons of salt as well. Open this up. in the sugar. That's two-thirds cup of sugar. Mix all that in there good. And then we're going to mix in a half cup of oil and two eggs when we're ready. Meanwhile, I'm going to go over and check Things are started here, that's good. Mm -hmm. Let's start those again to make sure they stay nice and toasty. Okay. Good stuff. You don't burn your hand off. Oh, I missed, missed me completely. <laughs> we have that on video. I lost my once that way. <laughs> on a nice gout jam. Okay, so there's my flour mixture. I'm going to need a half cup of oil. Measure this up quick. Shells out, that's good. And two. Okay. So we mix those up good. I like using the wood spatula because it doesn't scratch the pan or anything. But. And then we got liquid in the other bowl that's soaking. I'm going to mix that in here too. this all together. And you know you got the vegetables. <laughs> so funny. And we have to clean this little bunt pan, which I'm going to take inside and just do a little bit of that. So we're going to take a quick break here while I get rid of this garbage. Be right back. Um, okay, so I've been down the stream. I rinsed this out a little bit. You've got my water on my hands a little bit. So that's all cleaned off. We're gonna just put a little bit of oil in here to uh, make sure it doesn't stick. So I like to just put a little bit on here like that. A little put bit. It in there. And get it all in here on the sides. Did we put any oil in there? Yeah, we did already, didn't we? Uh, in that? We no. We did a half cup of oil at the start. Are you sure? Pretty sure. I don't think so. Trust me, trust me. Okay, well, if it's not, then. Okay, so my garbage, where's my garbage? Right there. Okay. So then, we just pour this nice mixture in here. Just lovely. Make sure 
it's all mixed up at the bottom there. I know I'm mixed up. The reason I chose the, the bunk cake pan is that it would then cook on the middle and the sides at the same time without having to go all the way through when it's this thick of a cake. Otherwise you'd need a really wide uh, Dutch oven, so this worked good for us when you're on track. Okay, you have to get me a spoon thing. And just do that like that. Okay, fix that. Mm, delicious. Okay, tin foil. Where'd that go? So, you still going? Uh-huh. The other thing that we like to, I like to use is the tin foil just to lift it up off the bottom so it doesn't burn. And it's got heat coming down from the top as well, but the heat from the bottom comes faster. So I like to lift it up just a little bit. It sits like that. I've got room to put my lid on here. Very nice. It fits just like that, and that's how we do it. Okay, so the instructions say to put almost 20 on the bottom and 10 on the top, or minus 2. So, we're going to start here with this. I've got this little tool I use for my briquettes. I'll put it over here. We've got two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or so, and the rest on the bottom. Okay. Burning ones are by these ones that aren't started quite as good. Okay. And then all we do is get our super gloves on here, just in case. Put that here, that there. We take a look at our time. According to the recipe, it's going to take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes for this period, and then we take just the top coals for a while for 15 20 minutes after that. So it's about a 40 minute process. So we're going to stop here for about 15 minutes, see what happens. We were about uh, 10 minutes in. This is doing pretty good. The coals have all got nice and hot. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the top. The rest are on the bottom. Um, the theory of the Dutch oven is that it's cast iron and it absorbs the heat and then redistributes it evenly into the inside area. So it's very forgiving for cooking. Um, we have these tools here. This one is the lid lifter. We need to, we can lift the lid and take a look, see how things are going, we'll move stuff around. This is the pot lid holder so I can lift it off and put it onto this so it doesn't get into the dirt and stuff. And uh, that's pretty straightforward. I like to use this tin, uh, it's a pizza plate, I guess, at one time. But I like to keep that so if I want any grass area, all the coals kept in the uh, metal area and the don't cause a fire as much and keeps everything together. The uh, book I have here called Dutch Oven Cooking 101 came with my uh, oven. It says that these uh, have been in use in the United States since
16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. They've been used quite often. Uh, gloves are important when you're dealing with fire. You don't want to burn yourself. So I got these uh, big old gloves from TV Mart or whatever. We just use them to pick up stuff that's hot or when you're sticking your hand in the fire, you want to burn something. And uh, of course you also have these tong holders so that you don't have to actually touch the tongs. This is an interesting one. It has a nail stuck out of the briquette. So as they get uh, burned, you can flip them over, get some of the ash off. I like to uh, keep the ash away because it is an insulator. The more ash that's there, the less heat that's getting down inside. So that's why I use this spare toolie here. Dust that off, or sometimes they just blow it like this. Ready? And that way it keeps those out of there. Put these back where they're supposed to be. Kind of even them out spacingly. Uh, space them out evenly. <laughs> do that backwards. Adrian, <laughs> thanks for helping. Space <laughs> This is our home evening activity tonight. So she's uh, the videoer, and I'm the video E. So okay, so uh, we got that, that. That's so uh, embarrassing. I said that. Leather gloves are handy. Uh, I don't have a leather apron, but they recommend that. And then this dealy is called a chimney or a charcoal starter. Usually, you start at the bottom. It just heats up. If you have a campfire going. You can put the briquettes in, put it on the campfire, it'll start it up and get going, and then you can use it on your briquette. And what I like to do is after the briquettes done, they're pretty much done, but I could throw them in this uh, little barbecue that I bought from the Holthies and uh, just use it for your s'mores or whatever afterwards, and it'll start a little fire there for you. So how are we doing on time, Adrian? Right now. I think you're getting close to about... 12 minutes in. It is 7.15, but our clocks are different. Okay, so it's about 15 minutes. So what we're going to do at this time, lift the lid, take a look at it. See how we're doing. You ready? The trick with the lid is not to get any of this ash inside. Looks like we're getting a little bit of rain here too, so I might have to go quickly. Put this over here. It's looking good. We're gonna leave that the way it is. Turn it a little bit here. And the rest of these we're gonna put up to the top. Finish off baking from the top down. Put the rest of these up here. briquettes haven't started yet, but if they're by one that's uh, hot, then it'll catch on. I'll finish brushing these off here. You see we're getting a little rain here just like you're really camping, we can uh, put it underneath a enclosed area or tarp or something. The rain will cool it down a little bit. If you put your hand over this, you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's getting quite a lot of heat by that time, so you know you got a good lot of heat going there. So what we're going to do is move this into a less uh, rainy area. Shove it under that table. 
Well, you got heat coming up, so it has to be up off the ground a little bit. So we'll move it. Uh, well, you better move fast. Somewhere else. The show must, must go on, Dad. The show must go on. So it's uh, about 7.30. We've been about a half hour on our whole evening night. I'm going to take this lid off for a second. Oops, that's not lid, that's this one. This here. Let's lift this down here. It's getting a little bit, it could little, be browned a little bit more on the top, so I'm going to put it on for about three or four more minutes. Spin it around here. Let's see how it goes. That looks better. It looks a little better. I'd like to get a little more brown, so I'm going to leave it on for a little bit. I'm going to get me a toothpick to stick down and see if it's done in the middle. And we'll try that. Okay, you ready? Okay, looks like it stopped raining for a moment. That's good. We're taking the coals off the top, put them on the bottom for now. And we're going to check this one more time in about 45 minutes or 50 minutes now. We're getting a little browning on the top. That's good. And I'm going to check it with another stick that I whittled from this forest over there. Pretty good. The smoke on my might eyes. Be, uh, the very bottom might be a little bit wet, but let's give it another smidgen, let it cool down. You can take it out, let it cool down. In this case, I'm going to leave it in the oven to let it finish cooling down. And uh, I guess a couple of words about cleanup. Dutch ovens always look dirty because of the ash. You don't wash them with soap, hot water, and a dry cloth or a paper towel is all you need and you usually oil it when it's still warm the oil kind of soaks into the uh, metal and the metal cools and the oil's it's trapped in there it's like a no stick coating for the next time you use it so no soap oil it after you wash it and put it away for next time you don't want it to uh, rust either so that oil helps keep it from rusting as well so we're going to leave it for about uh, 20 minutes to let it cool down and then try flipping it over and see what it does. I just uh, demonstrated that you can also put on this little barbecue thing if you want to put stuff on there, but it's hard to regulate the heat too. So we're going to pull it out. Clean plate. Let's see if we can flip it over here. It sounded like it. If not, if it's so hot a little bit. Might have to cut around the edge with a little knife. Let's see, I lost my knife. It sounded like it came down though. Cake. We really should let it cool completely, but we can't wait all night because we're campers. We're hungry now. Obviously. Obviously. Go on the middle here. Okay. Try it one more time here. much okay so there we go got it flipped over what we do then after it's nice and cool you just cut it to little pieces like this so 
serve it on a plate. A little bit of butter, honey, eat it up. Pretty good. Now this one didn't turn out very good because it fell apart. But that's my fault. Didn't mix it up really good either, I guess. But it tastes good. Pretty much done. This is the uh, after it's cut up. I put it into little serving things. Take a little hunk of that, some butter, honey. You mix it together and make honey butter if you want. Slap it on there. We're gonna take some to Aubrey to see if she likes eating it. So done for home evening. Thanks.